Howdy folks, Shell Presto de Baggio here with, well, I'm calling this a sketch and chat because I didn't record the first part of my process on this one, but you'll get to see the finished piece. Anyway, today we're going to talk about when looking at art that's better than yours makes you feel like your own art looks like crap and what to do about that feeling. But first, let me tell you what you're looking at. This is Camistra, a member of the Challenger Foundation. I drew this in the middle of a group shot because I didn't know what her costume looked like yet and you have to know what a character looks like to draw them. So this is a little costume design I did for her. She appears in Copper Knights and Granite Men, co-written by my husband and yours truly, with an illustration by me in each chapter. You can check it out on Amazon, other online booksellers, or ascensionepoch.com. Okay. There have been various times in my life when I'd look at another artist's work and feel crushed. I would feel like their artwork was so much better than mine that I had so many miles and years to go to reach that level that getting that good just seemed hopeless. And this feeling can come out of nowhere and clobber your good drawing habits, especially if you manage to draw often. One minute you look at your work and you're thinking, hey, this looks pretty good. And you look at someone else's awesome artwork, which you do pretty often without any ill effects, but suddenly, bam! Today, that same drawing that you just thought looked good, that you did, looks like crap because someone else's drawing of something different looked better. Now, it may be hard to grasp this, but that feeling of inadequacy is a very important part of being an artist, and feeling that despair or disgust and channeling it could be one of the best ways to level up your art. But you have to control and direct that feeling. You have to make it work for you. You have to master it. I've walked up to artists I admire, not the big ones you'd think, not classic comic book pros, but indie level people, or local artists, or folks who only have a deviant art account and draw for fun. I've walked up to artists I admire or left comments online saying, I'm completely envious of your art. And as you'd expect, I've gotten a lot of, don't feel that way, or gosh, I don't want you to be jealous, like it's a bad thing. But I explained to them that that's both a high compliment and a good thing. It's probably the nicest thing that I could possibly say and the highest compliment I can give an another artist. Don't get sad when you see art better than yours and that seed of jealousy digs in. Get angry. Not at that other artist, but at your own inadequacy. Mildly but righteously furious. Because if you have that feeling, then there is something you can improve about your art. Now that you've channeled that jealousy to light a fire under your butt, it's time to act. Probably the drawing that kicked this feeling off, the one that some other artist did, is multiple levels better than your own art. There are probably many, many differences in their art and yours. Your job is to pick one thing, one small thing. Make it the smallest, most granular thing you can. It can't be, draw people like that. It can't be, draw better or get good. If you can't immediately start improving your own art based on what you've identified, then you've gone too big. Good examples of what to pick would be, do shadows under the neck like that person. Draw better shoulders. Use speed lines like that person. Make my poses more fluid by using similar spine curves. If you have a big style changing suggestion like draw hair like that person, break it down further. Really think about what you should change first. It might be draw flowier hair, draw short hair, add better highlights to hair. Or if it's eyes, it might be get my eye placement more correct anatomically, improve the vibrancy and the way I color eyes, change the shape and style I draw eyes in, 
like the way I draw eyelashes. See how I'm trying to go as small as possible with the goal? Now, while you're still fired up and feeling bad about your art, cling on to that one atomic thing and explore it. Pick up your pen or pencil or digital stylus or mouse or whatever and draw and sketch and practice and copy just that part of the other person's drawings. Try to get an eye to look the way theirs does. If you're working on the neck, draw just the chin to the collarbone. If doing shoulders, just the collarbone to the bicep. You want to practice on a small scale and do it many, many, many times. If you can't figure out how they did it, if you can't replicate the effect you want, start digging on the internet. Type how to and fill in the thing you want to improve there. How to draw realistic eyes, how to draw anime eyes, how to color eyes, how to draw necks, how to draw ears, how to draw braided hair. There's a tutorial for everything. Type that into YouTube. Type that into Google. You can also use the word tutorial. Drawing eyes tutorial. Drawing knees or trees or bees tutorial. If it's a background you want to practice, it's time to dig through old drawings. If you're like me, you probably have a ton of half-finished sketches that you abandoned in your sketchbook. Time to go back to them. Since you only want to work on backgrounds and you didn't care enough to finish that figure drawing anyway, start tossing in little background elements. Practice speed lines there, even if the figure isn't moving or doesn't look good. Or print out someone else's line art with no background. You're only practicing, so you're not going to sell this or post it online. So you can isolate the one thing you want to work on and do it now and quickly. Now and quick is key, while you're still fired up and motivated. If you wait for that feeling to pass, you won't want to work on this little tedious stuff. It's boring, after all. But it's the only way you'll get better. And by being productive, you'll sidestep feeling bad or depressed about your artwork. The hardest part, of course, is getting over that initial bout of art depression. You need to stop thinking, holy halftones, my art rots compared to this, and start thinking, why does this look so much better than my art, and what is one thing I can do right now to make my art look closer to the quality of this art? It's important to note, too, that you can do this no matter what the other art's style is compared to your style. You may draw realistically, and the drawing may be anime style, or vice versa, but maybe it's the color contrast that is better. That applies to both styles. Or maybe you like the way you draw the shape of eyes right now, but that person's eyelashes are better. Or it's the highlight of the lips, or the way they blur mountains in the background. You don't have to change your style to match someone else's whose art makes you jealous. After all, you draw in your own style because you like your style. Probably, if the style of art is different than yours, but you're still, you know, jealous of it and feeling bad about your art compared to it, it's something removed from style, some universal art concept that is the key to improving here. Don't be afraid to stare at the artwork making you jealous for a long time. Make it your desktop background or your phone background. Print it out and tape it to your school folder or pin it to your cubicle wall or put it on your refrigerator door. For the past two years, I've kept Gil Elvgren calendars on my refrigerator so that every time I grab milk for my coffee or a bottle for my son, I can take a few seconds and ponder what he does that I can do better. He's a pinup artist that did stylized paintings of women. He was active from the 1930s on up and draws in a style that I'd like to have, but I'm a long ways off from that. But it's a tiny opportunity to learn every day. I think sometimes we get afraid to surround ourselves with art that challenges us because it makes us feel bad about our own art. But so long as you're practicing and trying to learn, you should be proud of where your art is. You're doing the best you can now with your own experience. Feel good about that, but also keep your eye toward improving. 
Don't be afraid to stare down art that makes you feel inadequate and look for that one small thing you can do today or this week to make your own art just that much better. And if it's a nobody artist, if it's that local artist or that indie comic on tapas or deviant art, or that person with an Instagram account just for fun, or hopefully one day as I get better, that chick that does the illustrations for those Ascension Epoch books, make sure you shoot them a comment or message saying, hey, your art is so good it makes me want to improve my own art. Keep doing what you're doing because it's awesome. Because that'll make that person's day and turn your negative feelings into positive ones. Hell, Sometimes you do that and the person responds with drawing books they recommend or tells you how to improve something you're struggling with. It doesn't always happen, so don't expect it, but it could happen, and it won't if you close the window or app on whatever drawing made you feel inadequate and go sulk in the corner about how your drawings rot. So remember, it's not, my art rots compared to this. It's, why does this look so much better than my art? And what is the one thing I can do right now to make my art closer in quality to this? Get fired up, and then get better at drawing. Whew, that was intense. Ask me questions or leave comments below, folks. Tell me what you're working to improve on, or if you've had similar experiences. Also, hit that like button and subscribe. And if you want to help out the channel, please check out my books. I'd just like to remind you fine folks that Camistra appears in Copper Knights and Granite Men. A pretentious, super-powered musician, an ageless techno wizard, and a radioactive commando walk into a museum and find the patrons turned to stone. Copper Knights and Granite Men is a witty and suspenseful superhero adventure that draws from the King in Yellow mythos and taps the secret occult history of North America. Most importantly of all, folks, have an awesome day. Presto, over and out. So once upon a time, a few years back, I stumbled upon an awesome indie comic artist on DeviantArt. I ran a comic creator group on DeviantArt at the time, which I later closed because no one ever read the submission rules, and asked said artist if I could interview him for one of the group's features. Said comic artist was J.R. Robinson, who does a really cool comic called Demon Kings with a darn good story and fantastic art. I told him so, and said I wish I had his inking skills. Now, this doesn't happen often, but I must have caught this artist at just the right intersection of a bit of free time and a dash of goodwill, because he inked a bit of one of my pages to give me some tips on how he inks, and that was awesome. And it never would have happened if I didn't reach out and tell an artist whose art made me want to be a better artist that that's how their art made me feel. Like I said, people can be busy, and most will just give you a thank you, but occasionally you get some good art advice back. So I just wanted to share that. Another thing to know is that if you'd like to see how an artist you admire would draw something you want to learn to draw, you could consider commissioning them, too. I really wanted to see more of J.R.'s inks up close and in person, so my husband and I commissioned him to draw a couple of the East End Irregulars. It's cool to have another artist's rendition of our characters, and they don't just liven up a room. Viewing them is also a learning experience for me. J.R. does a really interesting mix of clean, detailed ink lines and gritty, painterly textures with his inks. He also incorporates his own fingerprints into textures, a pretty awesome technique. So I just wanted to share one of my artists helping out artists stories. Demon Kings is a story of humans and demons investigating weird occurrences and other demons. It's free to download online, although JR gratefully accepts donations, and there are six amazing looking issues if you want to check them out at demonkings.com, one word, no spaces. Farewell and adieu to you.
you ladies of Spain, for we've received